Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome to our first day working on our 24 valve Cummins. So, if you guys saw the last episode, we picked this gem up. Um, it's nothing special, um, but it is our for first foray into the VP44 scene. So this truck is a 98 and a half, um, and we're just going to kind of learn about the platform, um, hop it up a little, drive around, no real big um i have plans for it but it's nothing you know mind-blowing or anything like that to start off off with but in order to get started with everything we really need to go over the truck make sure everything's good like i said this truck has 217,000 miles on it and we really don't know much about it so that being said the first basic things we need to do the truck is just kind of some service stuff so that being said first things we're going to do is change the engine oil in the truck as it is the lifeblood of the truck and also we were are going to change the fluid in the rear differential the other thing that goes along with this, like we don't know anything about the transmission in this truck other than it is a 47 RE. We don't know the last time it's had a fluid service. We don't know if it's been rebuilt before. We have no idea about the transmission. Now, I would normally be, you know, going into the transmission or, you know, dropping the pan and changing the fluid and the filter in the trans just to check everything out and all that. All we're going to do today is make sure the level is where it should be um, because I don't want to drop the pan uh, before we have a, um, a new transmission pan because like any other factory transmission pan or most of them out there, there's no drain plug. So while we're going to be pulling it off to check the filter and all that, we might as well replace that with something with a drain plug, um, magnet, all that kind of stuff. So we are going to be waiting until we get something for that to go through the transmission stuff. Now, the other thing with the truck that we're going to try and do today is trying to get some of the lights off on the dash. So if we turn the truck to on, actually let's start the truck it has been a couple days see how she starts and she starts right up so with the truck running as you guys can see we have a check gauges which is because of our oil pressure was down which we're good but oh looks like we're not charging started right up um, it had a check gauges light on um, which it took a second for the oil pressure to climb up and also it took a few seconds for the um, the, the voltmeter to read you know up near 14 volts so we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that stuff um, I don't think it's a big deal like I said it's been sitting a couple days but it fired right up so we have our brake light is on and our ABS light the brake light I believe is because the parking brake as you guys can see yeah it's uh not right the other thing is we have a check engine light so so our check engine light is on because we have um a couple of diagnostic trouble codes so the engine ignition is on so the first one here The P1693 is actually like kind of a miss or not miscellaneous. It's one that doesn't matter. It's just there because we have another code. Um, turbo boost pressure sensor circuit low. Um, so that's something with our map sensor. And then a P0602, which is control module programming error uh, slash not program. So um, I did, you know, kind of investigate these and that last one seems to be um, because the truck is tuned. So what we're going to go ahead and do to figure out if, uh, you know, if it is the tuner that is causing that, we're actually going to take the tuner off and see if that fixes that particular problem. Okay. So 
So as far as our check engine light goes, we're going to see um, if putting the truck back to factory gets rid of that one error code on there. Um, like I said, the first code on there is actually like an erroneous code that's there because of other stuff. So um, hopefully we can figure out what the um, the other one is with as far as boost pressure. So. Like I said, guys, we're just gonna try and iron the truck out a little bit, so that way we have a good kind of platform to work off of. You know, we know that the oil has been changed. We got good oil in it. We're also gonna check the rear because it is very well possible that the fluid in the rear of this truck, which I think this truck has a Dana 60 rear. Uh, don't quote me. I like I told you guys before. I don't know 100%. Um, you know about these trucks so anyway but that rear fluid is liable to have 217,000 miles on it. so we're going to do all that and see if we can get the check engine light kind of situation sorted out and uh yeah go from there and that we know that way we know kind of what we're working with so let's get to it and get these fluids changed So got the cover off the rear, drain that. Can't say I found anything out of the ordinary. There was a little bit of metal on the magnet on the um, pan cover uh, or on the rear cover, uh, but I can't say it was that awful much or anything that make you you know think something was going on. Um, no teeth were missed, uh, you know. Well, none were missing, but none were broken or anything like that. So like I said, nothing really to report for the rear. Um, I do have the cover on there with RTV. It is setting up, so we will let that sit up until like toward the end of the night and then we'll get our fluid in there i'd rather not leave the um leave the thing without fluid overnight for the simple fact that then i make you know could make the mistake of saying you know let's move this thing around whatever you know and just don't want to get myself in that situation so when we move up to the front here um got the engine oil changed basic same basic thing we always do um but uh, I will say that we replaced the uh, oil filter with a new Mopar one. I typically tend to gravitate toward the Mopar oil filters and the local advance usually has them in stock, which is a plus. But this thing had a Fram filter on it and uh, yeah, not a big fan of cardboard. So, um, but we did pull our intake to do this um, and the compressor of the turbo is nice and tight. I mean, this thing has like no play, which is, uh, pretty impressive I, I i'm just assuming it's the original turbo i honestly do not know and it could be different and i wouldn't wouldn't know any different also our, our air filter is nice and clean so that's a plus so while this thing's draining down another thing i got to looking at was our map sensor so i had to obviously google it and find where it was and it is down here if we look let's see if i can Spot this thing. Where is it? I just saw it. Um, boom, boom. Um, okay, so right here is what I believe to be the map sensor. So, as you guys can see, there's nothing plugged into it. I, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So, you go back here. Look, there's a nice handy dandy little plug. 
So it looks like the map sensor was not plugged in for whatever reason. Um, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, like the clip's damaged or anything. So that's plugged in. We'll have to see if anything changes as far as our check engine light. And as far as that goes, we also did return the computer back to stock. Um, it now has the stock program in it or whatever the super chips does for stock. You know, some of these things, they just put their version of that back. So I hopefully we got our map sensor and all that figured out and we have our check engine lights done. So I'll finish getting this thing full of oil and then I'm going to investigate our parking brake. Also, um, when I was looking at the engine oil or when I was draining it, we do have quite the leak up front. And I think that is all to do with this guy right here, which I believe is our crankcase breather. So um, that thing, yeah, it just kind of drains right down there to the bottom of the engine and goes all over the place, which is kind of silly. But from what I understand, that's just kind of how they are. So uh, definitely a little bit of a learning process. I'm used to having that crankcase vent like on our common rails up to the top and then going into um, you know, being sucked into the turbo, which then you reroute. So, you know, hopefully it'll go elsewhere. But uh, anyway, so that's kind of the update on the truck so far. We'll get to uh, filling this thing with oil and see if we figured out our check engine lights. So our engine is back full of oil. The differential as well is full. I did investigate our parking brake situation and it's going to take a little more investigation because uh, what is happening is the cable is still connected to the, um, the pedal, but all that's happening is the pedal is coming back. So when you pull the uh, parking brake release, the cable can still move, but it's like we're missing a spring or something, but like if when I push this down, that should stay down on the floor. Um, that's the way it is in Veronica and, and all that. So we got to do a little more investigating there. Probably gonna have to take some stuff apart. Um, on to the ne the next thing is did we clear any of our codes? So we will find out here shortly. Start this thing up and. Our check engine light um, the voltage is still slow to come up I don't know why that is but we will check our codes and see what they are see if we got rid of any of them and maybe I didn't even go through and delete them so maybe that's the problem I would have thought well, we flashed in the stock file that would have been enough fault and companion module and turbo boost pressure sensor circuit low so we did get rid of the one saying the programming was wrong by flashing this thing back to stock so if we go back we'll clear our dtcs okay now let's see Try starting this again. Uh oh. Hmm. Well, apparently the batteries are dead. Um, very odd. I'll get my little jump box. All right, so. The truck is dead <laughs> um we had a little issue i think that we did get the um check engine light problem resolved um once i you know erased the code for the map sensor uh we were good and it didn't come back on now when i went to try and start the truck again it promptly didn't start we didn't have not have enough power so 
as you guys probably remember earlier, I was saying how the um, the voltmeter was kind of slow to come up, which I didn't notice it doing that the other day. Well, if we look at our battery terminals, um, I cranked this one down to try and get it as tight as possible, but it's still still kind of loose, right? So that's after cranking on that thing pretty good. Um, so if you guys can see right there, right here, our battery turn or not our battery terminal, our um, the the battery cable end is actually split right there. So we're not keep being able to clamp down on this battery terminal the way we should. Um, honestly, when I was cranking that down, I was kind of afraid it was just going to break off. Um, it hasn't, and the truck won't start, but the batteries are kind of completely dead right now. So. The whole time I've been trying to, you know, starting this thing the last couple times and, you know, noticed that the voltage wasn't coming up. I don't know if this was just, you know, finally it decided it, it had enough. It didn't like it. Um, so I'm going to try and charge the batteries. Whoa. Charge the batteries back up tonight um, and see what we can figure out. I got to see if I can find some sort of a terminal for this because we have this one that's coming from the other battery. But we have this one here, the um, kind of the main power feed for the positive side. And that's a nice big cable. But yeah, as you guys can see, it's kind of loosey-goosey on there. Um, so I'm hopefully going to get be able to charge both the batteries. So we're good to go for tomorrow or whenever we get back to this thing. But uh, yeah, so that kind of sucks um, that we had this. But that's kind of the whole point of the thing is to see what kind of things you know issues come up with these trucks so remember this truck is 22 years old so you know what, what do you expect also i did pull these little things off that were above the uh, headlights but now we have little nipples we got to get off of there but anyhow guys kind of rambling on here uh yeah so we got the oil changed we got the rear differential fluid change i think we got our um, check engine light issue figured out or at least it seems to be um but another issue has arisen with our battery terminal um so that one ends just starting to rip off um when i bought the truck i remember the kid saying something about it like he was going to put new um terminals on there and and something along those lines so i don't know we need to find something to resolve this so it's not an issue so we can get a good bite on that battery and we can start the truck so hopefully we get these things charged up over the night and i can come up with a solution for that that is pretty quick so we can kind of keep rolling on this project so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed um we're just trying to get this thing sorted out so then we can actually do something with it i still want to take the front um brakes i want to take the wheels off i want to check the front brakes we should probably check the rear brakes and just check all that stuff see what's going on before we start running this thing around um i would really like to take it back and forth to work just to kind of get that old school vibe um i've always i've had common rails so i'm used to that electronic stuff and all that and um uh, as a matter of fact, that's probably part of the reason that the batteries are dead. The whole, every time I was starting the truck, you know, it says wait to start there in the bottom. Yeah, I never did it because with the common rails, you typically don't have to. So that's just another thing I got to learn that, hey, this is an older truck. When it says wait to start, maybe you should wait. Um, so the grid heater, I guess, was, you know, kind of drawing the batteries down. And uh, so anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrench on your truck.